Howdy, boyos! It's your local man, Deadbed Spread, coming back to bring y'all another smattering of smogist Figmon. What even is that? Smog plus August? Dragons. It's dragons. This video is a pair three, so if you haven't checked out the previous two vids, be sure to do that to see all of my creations so far. It's been quite a crazy month so far in terms of my own creativity. I can get stuck on designs for weeks or even months at a time. And given that I'm doing most of these within two hours with no preparation work, it's kind of bananas that within 24 hours of drawing, I can produce 12 fake man. If that's not inspiring to myself, then I don't, I don't know what is. To contradict all that, I'm only writing this script after completing this week's fake man. So no doubt, like the other two, this video is delayed. Oops! Before we begin, I just want to showcase some smogest fan art I've gotten. It absolutely blows me away that you guys are inspired by my designs. If you have any fan art you'd like to show me, you should have joined my Discord. Link is in the description. Anyway, dragons. When you read a prompt like Gothic, two things come to mind. Gothic architecture and... Goths. Thinking about it before streaming, all I could think of was some sort of castle-shaped dragon, but that would have just been way, way too complicated. Researching features of Gothic architecture, it couldn't have been more obvious. Gargoyles. They're demonic, ugly, and usually draconic. It honestly seemed like the perfect choice. The purpose of gargoyles was to actually act like a downpipe. Rainfall would be directed towards their rear end, and then spurred out through their mouths to protect the architecture and features of the building. So essentially, they barf. Researching animals that projectile vomit as a defense mechanism, I found the bone-eating bearded vulture. I mean, this thing is literally a Pokemon already. Look at it! Merging its features into a gargoyle, alongside a gothic color scheme and some lichen build up on its limbs, Gargagoyle perches atop the highest of buildings where it likes to project onto the unfortunate passerbys below. Also, man's made of rock. Way too heavy to fly. Who's it gonna get down? Who knows? So, you know, here I am making fake man, fake Pokemon, and the carp prompt shows up. Carp being a fish, but also meaning to complain needlessly. Like, that does anything to not make me think of Magikarp. It's just such an iconic Pokemon. Trying to create a different carp based Pokemon with its own identity would have been very, 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 very difficult. I was gonna have to get weird with this. I was thinking about a Pokemon that could maybe disguise itself as a Magikarp, maybe to feel loved or for some other more nefarious purpose. I ended up combining aspects from the big-headed carp, a bizarre mascot called Mysterious Fish, mysterious indeed, and Mimikyu, even down to the name. Mimikarp would roam underwater, maybe hoping to get fished up by a trainer or attempting to lure in a predator of Magikarp, which it would then consume in the blink of an eye. Speaking of eyes, this guy's two fake peepers that are constantly spewing false tears, just adding to the illusion of an abysmal existence. Third fish this month, and surprising nobody, it's still not water type. I decided to go a pure dragon, pulling a type trick akin to Sudowoodo. You presume it's water type, so you'd aim to use a grass or electric type move. What a shame then, that dragon resists those two types. Day 18 was a real nice change of pace. The idea came really quickly, the design process was relatively easy, and the final product was a nice boy. With sleep, figured we'd go with a combination of sheep, from counting sheep, that's supposed to method to fall asleep, and clouds, because rainfall and thunder are relaxing sounds to listen to. I mean, on a subjective level, of course. The wool of sheep already has a cloud-like resemblance, so, you know, this was perfect. Added ram horns and gave it a semi-serpentine body to emphasize the dragoniness. And with sleeping, the concept of dream bubbles made its way in too. Sleepy would be able to generate excess wool, which it can have orbit its own body for both defensive and offensive purposes. I also imagine that it would definitely have comatose as its ability, snoring up a storm while drifting through the skies. Hunger Dragon, huh? Yeah, that's, uh, that's Guzzlord. I really tried to think outside the box on Day 19. Maybe a Dragon-type food-based Pokemon. Like Applin, but savory. 
or based off the animal that eats the most, the blue whale. But we already have a blue whale Pokemon. Step outside the box, huh? I had to hike several kilometers away from said box to even think of a worthwhile concept for this day. Thinking of hunger, I took the phrase, so hungry I could eat a horse. I mean, we already have a few horse-based Pokemon, but still no Pegasus? And that seemed ideal for a new dragon. Also, there was this scandal back in 2013 where meat that was being sold as beef actually contained horse meat. I know this is a huge stretch for the hunger prompt, but sure look, Dragasus ain't half bad. Bit sus though. As we do every day, I did loads of research into the prompt Lemonade. Like a lot of things, it's different in Europe and the US. Despite me being European, I decided to go with the US equivalent. While lemonade is technically a thing here, it's not a term we'd regularly use. Lemonade in the West, however? That's goddamn iconic. It's created using lemon juice, water, and some sort of sweetener. Sometimes that sweetener is honey. Drinking a hot lemon with honey mixed in can help cure ailments. It's almost like lemon aid. I ended up combining elements of a rescue dog, a honey bear, and a fruit bat into this little nectar-nicking numbskull. Stealing honey from Combi or Beedrill, it would slather it on its fruity wings, in which a chemical reaction would take place, imbuing the substance with crazy healing properties, which Citrus Knight would then later consume when needed. Sounds like a pretty great item to have in your inventory, but pity that this guy doesn't like to share. For the first time in 20 days, I decided to finally take a break, so I ended up drawing this prompt early on day 22. I also forgot to screen record, so no time lapse for this guy, sorry. I pretty much knew what I was going to draw immediately upon seeing the corn prompt. I was imagining something similar to Giraldidon in terms of stature. The outer leaves of the corn could allude to dragon wings, the silk found in corn makes a pretty awesome hairdo. It was tempting to make Mazard some sort of popcorn grass fire dragon, but sometimes less is more. Or something to that extent. Is that too corny? <laughs> Monkey boom boom ip. Not much you can really do to stray far from a prompt like Gorilla. I actually made a gorilla last August, Gorilla, for which the prompt was Gorilla. Fucking English language, Jesus Louise. Gorillas are large, they live in mountainous areas, and the alpha is known as a silverback. What about a gorilla silverback gigantopithecus mountain gorilla? Christ. <laughs> when resting, it would resemble a large jagged rock. Maybe given its size, other Pokemon could make their home on its back. I probably could have implemented the dangling root patterns in a better way, but you know, for what it is, I think it's pretty effective. Given the gorilla tactic influence and the semi-obscured face, chat determined that the dark type fit Goraliath the most. I went into this day feeling as unproductive as I had on day 6 of Smogist. With pool, the most obvious imagery is that of a swimming pool, however, as I always do, I wanted to go another direction. Pool, like the Q-Sport. Decided to go with the idea of a magic 8-ball, and regarding any sort of spherical handheld Pokemon, the obvious route is to make it resemble a Pokeball. 8-balls are black, as is the Luxury Ball, so I worked on combining those. The animal inspiration was the Armadillo Girdle Lizard, an animal that I've had in mind for a fake mount for a while, but I never got around to making one. Until now. They bite their own tails and they roll into a ball. Cute as hell, right? I feel that the concept behind this little guy is really good, resembling some sort of luxury 8-ball combo when curled up, but I feel that the execution was a really big miss. The guy isn't even biting his own tail, for God's sake. Maybe you guys will like it. I think I definitely want to revisit the lizard in the future. Also, for the sake of type coverage, I just slapped the normal type in Orboros. Sorry. Not sorry. Thank you everybody for watching, that is week 3 of Smogist done, that is 23 dragons out of 31, only 8 to go, you'll see those in part 4. Uh, I am recording this super late, so I do apologize. Kind of running into a few hiccups now towards the end of the month, but I do plan on finishing strong. Again, if you want to submit any fan art, if you want to be updated for streams or uploads or anything like that, be sure to follow my Discord. If you want to see the final artwork for these guys, you can head over to my Twitter or Instagram. All links for those three are in the description. Again, I appreciate all of your guys' comments and feedback. 
look forward to finishing this and I will see y'all next time.